Hello guys, we are learning the new chapter now. I hope that in this chapter you you are more active than the previous chapter and if you have any questions, please more active in asking the teacher your difficulties. So this is our learning objective in this chapter, in this video. So I hope that you can describe the concept of electric currents. Okay? And you can distinguish between the direction of flow of electrons and the conventional current. And you can understand the, uh, the relations between the currents and the electric charge. Okay? And also you will study how to draw the simple circuit diagrams okay? with the symbols, the standard symbols diagrams. And number fifth, you are be able to, uh, to examine or to observe the series and the parallel circuits. Okay, in this case, we will focus only in current. So make sure that you understand this part because if you don't understand this all, then if I send another video, you will have more difficult to understand the next one. Okay. Okay, guys, imagine that this is the battery with positive and negative pole. Yeah, this one positive, this one negative, right? And then you connect the battery with a, a lamp. Okay. I assume that yeah, this is the symbol for the lamp. Okay. So, what will happen inside the 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 copper wire? Okay, this is copper wire. Okay. We assume that at the first, the copper wire is neutral. Okay. So. When you connect the copper wire with the positive terminal, then the electrons will be attracted. Okay, electrons will go to the positive terminal. Okay, then what is the effect? The the atom will become positive ion. Okay, so what will happen with the next atoms in the copper wire? Yeah, I zoom it. Okay, so the electrons will be attracted again. Okay, by this, uh, by these uh, positive atoms, positive ion. I mean, okay. So electron go here, then the atom will become positively ion. Okay, and will attract the next atom again. So the electrons go there. Okay, and this one become positive. So you can see here, if we look at the movement of electrons. So we can say that the electron is moved from negative to positive. But if you look at the positive one that move, okay, actually the remember proton never move, right? But it's only depend on our point of view, okay? So the electrons, sorry, if you look at the positive ion, yeah, then this is what we call as the conventional current okay if this one from negative to positive is electron directions so in my opinion both of them is correct actually just depend on your point of view if your point of view is the electrons then electricity is the movement of electrons from negative to positive if your point of view is the the one that the positive that moves then electric current is the movement from positive to negative or we can imagine that the movement of the current like the waterfall you can see that waterfall move from the high place higher to the lower Electricity move from the high potentials to the low potentials. High potential is the one that have positive charge in here. Then low potential is the one that negative charge. Another example if there are two objects, A and B. A is positively charged object. B is negatively charged object. So what will happen if we connect these two? Okay, so the electrons will move 
from B to A but the current or the conventional current will move from A to B another example if there are two objects with the different charge A has more positive charge B has less positive charge when you connect it so what will happen which one have the higher potentials of course the A is high potential it's higher because it has more positive charge but the B is low potential so how do the electron move electrons will move from B to A because in, in B have more electrons than A right okay A have a lot of electron loss but the current will move from A to B how about if the object is negatively charged okay and we connect to the neutral object as you see that the A has more electrons than the B right so the electron will move from A to B electrons but the current will move from B to A or we can say that the B is high potentials higher potential so remember this the current always flow from high potentials to the low potentials so even we assume that the currents flow from positive to negative or from high to the low potential we have to remember that but the current is caused by the flowing of electrons okay then how to measure the current in electronic circuits okay the device that you use to measure the current in the electronic circuit is the ammeter ammeter or maybe some books say that ampere meter okay ampere meter this is one of the example of the devices okay so uh, the unit of the current is the ampere yeah, okay this is taken from the name of the scientist in this picture okay so they use his his name as the unit for the current so what is the relations between the charge okay or the column with the electric currents okay so the unit of the electric charge is column I think you have learned it in the last topic okay and one column is equal to 6.25 times 10 to the power of 18 electrons so one column is the charge passing any point in the circuit when a steady current of 1 amperes flow for one second from this definition we can derive a formula state that the current is sorry not the current the electric charge is the current times by the time okay so Q is the charge the unit is column okay I is the current the unit is ampere T is time and remember the time must be in SI unit or in second if I give you in minute or in hour you have to convert it into second it's a must okay don't forget this okay exam example yeah there is one uh, there is two object okay there are uh, two column two column of electric charge flow from A to B in five seconds then how much is the current okay so the current is Q over T right so 2 column divided by 5 second so 2 per 5 ampere in drawing the electric circuit you have to use the standard circuit diagram so you have to memorize all symbols in here so when the teacher asks you please draw the standard circuit diagram you have to use all the symbols in there for example you are going to draw a diagram 
the lamp, the light bulb that is connected to the battery and there is a switch in here. So how to draw it? We start with the electric source. Okay. If we only use one battery, then you just draw one of this, one cell. Okay. If we use two battery, then there are two. Okay. If three, then there are three. And connect. Okay, you put the switch in here. So there's a switch, right? Switch. Okay. And after that, you connect with the lamp. The symbol of lamp is like this one. Okay. But some book also use another one. You can use this one also. Okay, this is the same with lamp, okay? Okay. If you want to connect with the ampere meters, then you have to put A in here. A symbol. Okay. After that, connect with this. Okay. If you are going to put the fault meter in the lamp, so the port, the fault meter should be like this. Why the position must be like this? I will explain in my next video it's about the how to use the ammeter and the fault meter. Fault meter is to measure the potentials different. Yeah. PD ampere is for current. If you still don't understand what is the fee, be patient. You will study in the next part. Remember that in one circuit, okay, uh, the definition of circuit is it must be in closed circuit, okay. So make sure that your circuit is closed, okay, closed circuits. This is one of the example in the closed circuit closed circuit okay so the current in the closed circuit if there is not any branch okay they will have the same current okay you can see that it has the same current okay so the the how to draw this circuit okay if this circuit so there are three lamp right let's draw it so one Two, uh, you can use this symbol, okay? After that, wire and connect to the power supply. Okay, so we assume that the long one is, you have to remember that the long one is positive, the short one is negative, and the current is flowing from positive, this is the direction of current, to negative. Okay? Because every every section it has the same current, so the current in here, same with the current in here, same with the current in here, right? So every lamp get the same amount of current. So that's why they have the same brightness. Guys, this is the uh, the question that you can practice at home. So make sure that you do this question by yourself and put your answer in the second page in the OneNote homework. If you want to see the question, you can stop this video. This is the second question. So please answer it. What is the current at this point? What is the brightness of the bulb in a series circuit? So there are two different circuits here. Okay, the difference is only the electric source. The first one uses one cell, the second one uses two cells. You can see that if you increase the cell, you add the cell, then you increase the current, right? It has more current flow in there. If the current increases, of course the effect is the bulb will get brighter. In parallel circuit, it will divide the current. 
Okay, so the total flow of current is equal to the total current from all of the branches. Let's see this example, yeah. So each of them have 2 ampere flow here. So the total current is 6 ampere. So I can draw like this, yeah. At the first, the I, the I is 6 ampere flow in this one, right? And in these junctions, start to split, okay? 2 will go here. Okay, and we'll divide it into here. Okay, and this one letter will divide again. So if this each have two ampere, then the total current is six ampere. So what is the current that returns back to this electric source? The same also, six ampere. So two ampere in here. If you confuse with this diagram, you can simplify the diagram become like this. So there is an electric source, then start to divide. One, two, three. Oops. So 2 amps in here, 2 amps, 2 amps, the total is 6 amps, the one that get in also 6 amps. What is the ammeter reading in this section? If I draw the ammeter in here, okay, how much the reading inside the ammeter? Because there are 3 lamps that is connected in parallel, in parallel, right? So the I total will be I1 plus I2 plus I3. Yeah, so this is the I1. This is the I2 and this is the I3. So the I1 is the one that get into the first lamp. And the one that get out also equal, right? So if 3 ampere in here, this one also 3 ampere. Okay, if this one 3 ampere, this one also 3 ampere. I3 also 3 ampere then then when they join into this section then it will be 9 amps okay so the one that get out from the electric source also 9 amp the one that get in also 9 amp so remember in parallel the I is the total I from each branch